Hello again friends. This is episode 5 of Just Return. You remember in episode 4 Gus had buried poor Duncan's body and he'd come back to where Belinda was and he'd found her still sleeping. So we read on from there. Gus went once more to the plain site. Excuse me. As he worked his way through the baggage of the dead, he found a few cups, flasks, a campus kettle and saucepans, also chocolates, tea, coffee, and a few tools and knives. He put the useful items in a haversack that he'd emptied for the purpose, put it on his back, and returned again to the camp. Stopping at the water source, he filled the kettle. Back at the fire, he placed it on top of some glowing embers and waited. Hopefully, boiling the water would be enough. He could only try. He contemplated their position. What about food? Okay, he had chocolate, and at the wreckage of the plane, there might be more edible things, but it wouldn't last long. And in this vast forest that stretched for maybe thousands of miles, there must be food. Yes, he'd been trained to survive in the war, but eating roots fruits and plant stems in a Prussian forest was one thing. Here, different. The kettle was soon boiling so we poured out a cup of water. Now we'd have to wait for it to cool a little. It was no good. This was the only test that he could think of. He had to drink it. If there was some awful disease hiding in the water, well he'd have to accept the fact. The warm water slid down his throat and the taste was okay. It wasn't like the tap water that he'd become accustomed to, nor was it like the water that he remembered drinking as a boy, the well water. He looked at Belle. She was breathing very evenly still, and for the first time he really thought about how very pretty she was. Even now in this sad and sorry predicament, he looked at her and thought she'd be a granddaughter for someone to be proud of somewhere. He bent forward and gently called her name. Bell, 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 just as he heard Duncan use her name on the doomed plane. No response. He kept trying. Bell, wake up, I have water for you. He knew that she needed water too, and they would have to risk the water's hidden properties for good or for bad. They had no choice. And a little louder he said, Belle! The girl stirred a little, and in the forest gloom he saw her eyes flicker open, then shut, then open, then shut. Belle, please, a drink for you. Duncan, Belle said. Where is Duncan? Gus hesitated. He is not here just now. I have to look after you for Duncan. Please, you need a drink. Belle had her eyes wide open now. She tried to lift her head and groaned. Then her eyes became alarmed. The plane! Where am I? Gus spoke slowly. His English was very good, but he was not sure how conscious Belinda was. If she was Belinda, or was she Annabelle, or Mirabelle, or Arabella? Maybe just Belle? No, he thought he had heard Duncan call her Belinda just before just before the crash. We crashed in the forest and you banged your head. We've survived, but it has been too long and you need some water. May I hold your head up so that you can drink a little? Yes, yes, thank you. Belle looked into the gentle face that bent over her. Who are you? I'm Gus, that is Gus Mitza. I was in the seat behind you in the plane. Belle sipped the water. She looked into the eyes again. Where is Duncan? He's not here. At the moment there's just you and I. Why did he go? Is it not better for us to all stay together? Gus just smiled. Don't worry about a thing. Just relax. We'll be rescued soon. Belle was trying to read his face, but she couldn't. Duncan... He is okay. 
Gus Duncan is okay, isn't he? How long have you been together? Gus sought to divert her attention. We're not together, really. Well, we're engaged and we're married. Later this year, Duncan's my fiance. Is Duncan okay? You need to rest, child. Yes, I do, but please, is Duncan hurt? Gus looked in the, to the blood stained on his face. If Rembrandt, Hermanes van Rijn, had painted that face, we would call it Portrait of Innocence, he thought. He wouldn't lie to her, and he felt he had no choice. Bell picked up on his slow response. He is hurt, isn't he? Gus nodded. Bell, the plane crashed through the forest canopy. It's a wonder any, that any of us survived. I think you and I are probably the only two who have. Bell's eyes filled with tears. She cried gently at first. And then she wailed in an uncontrollable intensity that tore at the old man's heart. No, no, she cried out. Gus wanted to comfort her, to hold her as no one else could. But did she want him to do that? He found a handkerchief and wiped her tears, and she grabbed hold of his arm and com for comfort. Then Gus put his arm around her and gently held her till the tears stopped, and she was again asleep. The forest was gloomy, but it was not yet night. Gus built up the fire and headed again for the crash site. He didn't want to leave Belle alone, and the darkness would be a time to always be close together and within sight of the fire. He couldn't explain it, but he felt as if the load of the burning wood was as impregnable as imaginable. Sorry. He felt as if the light of the burning wood was similar to a city wall. Within the glow and flicker of the flames, they'd be safe, but beyond, in the blackness of night, there would be danger. It wasn't that he was afraid, but he had to survive so that Belle did. What hope for a young girl, battered and grief-stricken, in the endless rainforest? What would become of her if something became, became of him? In her, he saw right now all the worthwhile aspirations of the young. But he mused... Those good intentions of the young could be lost without the preserving power of the old. Not far from his home in England, an old farmer had died and the son had demolished the old farmhouse and used the old stone to prepare the site for a new house. Gus felt that he was like that stone, old but still useful to help young Bell build, build what he asked. Some measure of, hopeless of the situ hopelessness of the situation kept drifting back through his thoughts as the darkness gathered in. He placed to one side the useful objects he gathered from the crash site. Bell was sleeping peacefully again. He was glad she'd had some water. And her pretty face, still tear-stained, flashed before him in the flames. He lay down not far from her, exhausted, and aware of the changed sounds of the forest. Distant calls soon became troubled dreams as Gus himself slid into sleep. Thank you. Episode 6 to follow very shortly. Bye for now.